Hello everybody, Mrs. Kip back here again. Today we are going to be learning about animals of the East African savanna habitat, which is right here on the map, this yellow part they shaded of Africa. So that is where we are going today. Today we will explain why living things live in the habitats to which they are particularly suited. We will classify animals on the basis of their types of food they eat, herbivore, which is a plant eater, carnivore, which is a meat eater, and omnivore, which eats both plants and animals. We will identify the characteristics of the grassland habitat, and we will explain how grassland animals have adapted to the grassland habitat. All right. Well, let's go. Let's see where Rattenboro is. There he is, ready to take us. Rattenboro, your intrepid or fearless adventurer here to show you something a little different. We've been talking about habitats, the places where plants and animals live, and we spent time in three of the most extreme habitats in the world. The freezing Arctic tundra, the Arctic Ocean, and the scorching Sonoran Desert. Now I've come to a habitat that should be of great interest to you. Some of the most famous animals in the world live here. Famous animals? Hmm. Ooh. Here's the African savanna. Look how pretty that is. Welcome to the East African Savanna. Savanna is another name for grassland, a wide open, vast stretch of grass covered land. You know you're in the grassland when there's a lot of grass around you, but not many trees or bushes. The East African Savanna has very warm weather all year round. However, it only has two seasons, the rainy summer and the dry winter. The plants and animals that live here have had to adapt to these two very different kinds of weather in the summer and winter. Luckily, I brought my umbrella in case it starts to pour. So there's only two seasons in the African savanna where we're used to having four. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. They only get two. Like they said, lots of grass and not many trees. Boy, I can barely see a thing in all this grass. There's so much of it. As the name grassland suggests, grass is the most important plant growing in the savannas. The grasses are very hardy, which means they can survive the tough conditions of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. The grass has adapted to these conditions by growing very deep roots. Even if the grass above ground is destroyed, the roots underground survive and the grass can grow back. This grass grows very quickly, as much as an inch per day. The grass in your backyard might take a whole week to grow an inch. So that grass grows very fast. There's a famous animal, a zebra. Yikes, I'm surrounded by hooves. That's because grass is food for many of the larger animals like elephants, zebras, gazelles, and antelope. They chew on grass all day long. I don't think grass is at all tasty to tell the truth, but these animals depend on the nutrients in the grass to survive. It's all they need to eat. It would seem that because so many animals eat the grass in the savanna every day, there wouldn't be very much grass left after a while. But remember that this grass grows back very quickly. So there's usually plenty of diff for all the different herbivores like zebras and antelopes to eat. Grass is not the only important source of food in the savanna. Many animals get their meals from the akishu tree. Giraffes with their long necks and tongues are able to eat twigs and leaves from the top of the akishu. Not only are giraffes tongues long, they are also very tough. It's a good thing too because the twigs of the akishu tree are covered with sharp thorns. 
that the giraffes eat along with the twigs and leaves. Look how tall he is. He's taller than the tree. Very cool. Elephants eat grass and they like akishus too. They rest in the akishu shade and eat the akishu leaves, branches, and seeds. They even like to strip off the bark and chew on it. Since elephants are eating all those plants and eating the tree, they are herbivores. So here is an akishu tree. Do you know what this looks like? This looks like the tree from The Lion King. That's why these are famous animals that we want to hear about, right? That's straight from The Lion King. I think this Akishu tree might be great to climb and get a better look at the savanna, but don't forget it's covered in prickly thorns. Ouch! Akishus have adapted well to their habitat. Akishus have small leaves that don't dry out as quickly as larger leaves would in the dry, hot months. The roots of an Akishu grow very deep into the ground, which allows them to collect water from far underground where there's not much rainfall, and their sharp thorns help keep some animals from eating too many of the branches. These trees are right at home in this habitat. There's another giraffe. Animals living in the savanna have adapted to their habitat in many ways. Some animals, like the giraffe, have long, powerful legs so they can quickly run away from predators, animals that hunt and kill other animals. Their long legs also help them travel long distances searching for food. Can you imagine a rat like me keeping up with a giraffe or a zebra? Not a chance! This is an ox pecker on the side of a giraffe. Now there's a little bird that's been sitting on this giraffe the whole time I've been watching. This is the ox pecker. Ox peckers perch on the backs of large animals. This ox pecker will use its sharp claws to hold on to the giraffe who will hardly even know it's there. The giraffe and the ox pecker coexist. When two animals coexist, that means they live together peacefully. The oxpecker feeds on the fleas and ticks living on the giraffe's body and warns the giraffe of any predators that might be trying to sneak up on it. In turn, the giraffe will let the oxpecker live on its back and provide the oxpecker with food, the fleas and ticks. Shelter and protection from predators, the oxpecker will spend most of its life on the gira giraffe's back. They're a good team. Here's another zebra. So here I am back in all this tall grass and I bet you recognize the black and white stripes of the zebra I've just run into. Zebras are especially adapted to living in the savanna. They have strong, long legs that make them very good at outrunning lions and other predators. And the stripes on the zebra's legs and body don't just make it look pretty, they camouflage the zebra against the grass so that predators can't see it. Zebras eat the grass on the savanna, so they are herbivores. Plant eaters. Another elephant. Over there I can see the largest land animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? This African elephant is very big and eats up to 400 pounds of trees and grasses every day. That's about the same amount as the weight of nine first graders. He would eat nine first graders in one day, except he only eats plants. So you don't have to worry. African elephants are adapted to the hot weather in the savanna. They have huge ears that they like to flap to stay cool and keep bugs away. They also have thick skin that protects them from branches and thorns. Do you see the trunk on that elephant? An elephant uses its trunk for all sorts of things. 
The trunk is, of course, the elephant's nose for breathing and smelling, but the trunk is also like a hand for lifting things, gathering food, and even holding on to other elephants' tails. Baby elephants or calves use their trunks to grasp other elephants' tails to keep them from wandering away from the rest of the herd or getting lost. Elephants also use their trunks to drink water. They suck up the water with their trunks and then put the water from the trunk into their mouth. They also use their trunks like a hose for showers and playtime. So that nose can do a lot. Is that guys, I was right. Where did I say this was? There they are. There's Mufasa right there. These animals are lions. Lions live in groups called prides. The pride rock, remember? The females or lionesses do the most of the hunting. They are carnivores that hunt zebras, elephants, and all kinds of other savanna animals. Most groups of lions have just one or two male lions. The male lion is a huge and incredibly strong lion. It has a furry mane, powerful jaws, and fearsome claws. Unless this lion meets a stronger lion, no other animal in the savanna habitat can match the lion's strength and power. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. One of the lion's favorite prey to hunt and eat is zebras. Zebras try to use camouflage of their stripes to hide in the grasses of the savanna so the lions will not see them. Where we learned yesterday that camouflage means to blend in with the environment. These are vultures. At the top of this tree, I can see and hear birds that are waiting for the lions to finish eating so they can have dinner. These birds are called vultures. A vulture is a scavenger, which as you have learned, is an animal that eats leftovers. So when the lions are done eating the parts of the zebra they want, whatever's left over on the ground, then those vulture, vultures will swoop down and eat whatever's left, even though it's already dead. And here is a picture of the food chain. All of the animals and plants you've learned about so far are part of something we call the food chain, which is illustrated in this image. What do you see at the bottom of the picture? It's the savanna grass. The arrow points from the savanna grass to the zebra because the zebra eats the grass. The next arrow points from the zebra to the lion because, you guessed it, the lion eats the zebra. The next picture after the lion is a picture of the soil because eventually the lion dies and its body becomes a part of the soil. Then more grass grows out of that soil and that starts the chain all over again. Next, I think we should head to a habitat that's a bit closer to home and explore some plants and animals that might look quite familiar to us. But for now, I'm going to check out more wildlife. I'll see you later. All right, so that's it for today. I just have a few comprehension questions I will ask. I'll pause after each question so you can think about it if you're watching this on your own or if you are watching this with somebody, then you could turn and talk for a minute and then we will compare our answers. All right, so if I asked you to describe the East African savanna, what are some things you would tell me about the East African savanna to describe it to me? Well, you could say that it's hot. Um, there are two seasons a dry season and a rainy season, lots of grass and not many trees. What were some of the plants that live in the savanna? Remember, savanna is another name for
So we learned about the tall grasses. Savannah is another word for grasslands. And the akishu tree. Um, they both develop deep roots that can reach far underground where their soil is wetter and dries out less quickly. Oh. <clears throat> so that's how they have adapted to having two seasons, one very wet season and one very dry season. Their roots can grow way down in the ground to get all that water that's way down there, even when it's a dry season. Um, giraffes, elephants, and zebras. Are those herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores? Giraffes, elephants, and zebras. They plant eaters, meat eaters, or do they eat both? They are herbivores. They all eat plants only. How has the zebra adapted to living in the savanna? The zebra has stripes that camouflage or make him blend in with his surroundings and he has long legs for running fast from predators. What about the elephant? How have elephants adapted to living in the savanna? They have thick skin to protect them from the sun and the heat, and they flap their ears as fans and to keep the bugs away. One more, a giraffe. How is he adapted to living in the savanna? He has a very long neck, a long, tough tongue, and very long legs. How do the oxpecker and the giraffe coexist or live together peacefully? Remember it said the oxpecker will spend most of its life living on the back of the giraffe. How do they do that peacefully? What do they both get out of the deal? So we learned that the ox pecker eats the bugs that irritate the giraffe and the giraffe provides food and protection for the ox pecker. So the ox pecker eats the ticks and fleas that are going to bother the giraffe. And the ox pecker also warns the giraffe when there's predators coming. Well, that's, can't ask for anything more than that. A free bath and warn you when somebody's going to try and come eat you. That sounds like a great friend. Would you want to live in the savanna? Why or why not? Personally, I would not want to live in the savanna because this would be a hot lunch for somebody. One of the uh, herb, or not herbivores, one of the carnivores or omnivores. Um, I would love to go see it from far away, take pictures, but live there, absolutely not. All right, an important vocabulary word from our lesson today was prickly. When something is prickly, it means it has lots of sharp points on it. I'm going to read a list of words. You are going to tell me if it is prickly or not prickly. In my class, we use sign language so we can answer in groups. This is yes, and this is no. So, first word, is it prickly, yes, or no, not prickly? A pillow. No, not prickly. A rose bush. That's prickly, that has thorns on it. A beard. That's kind of a tricky one. I think that could go either way. If a beard is just growing in, it's prickly. Sometimes beards are soft though. But I would say that's prickly, a beard is prickly. A blanket. No, 
a blanket should not be prickly. A brush to brush your hair. That is prickly. A chalkboard. No, that's not prickly. And a porcupine. That is definitely prickly. Don't touch that. All right, that's it for today. Tomorrow we will learn about animals of the temperate deciduous forest habitat. I can't wait for that. Have a great evening. Uh, be safe and take care of each other. See you tomorrow.